clear everything in the network tab, refresh and again click again. Right. Right, clear now, clear now. Right. And click on the customer. Cool. So it does the lead delivery. It right. brings a customer body. Yeah. Okay. Now show in your code. Right. It is the main model who was there. <clears throat> I mm -hmm. have created a route, uh, main routing uh, TS file. Mm -hmm. oh, all the things are there. I have taken it as a for route, main routes is there. And mm -hmm. going to that uh, file, here mm -hmm. it is like this. Mm -hmm. uh, here I have declared two components. Actually, uh, I have a different model over there. A customer mm -hmm. model is also there, and a supplier model is also there. Supplier model is also there, and I am just uh, bringing those here. Mm -hmm. and in the main view, router and outlet is just here, uh, the main page. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, what is going on? If uh, I have taken here, uh, I had some confusion. Actually, I have created another home component, but I don't know it is right or wrong. Actually, in home component, I have just pasted the uh, the links are there in this table mm -hmm. page. Mm -hmm. And if I go to now the customer model details, we can mm -hmm. see here onwards, I have defined the routes and registered those as the routes here. Mm -hmm. so it is uh, calling from here as a uh, module. And from there, it is throwing to my dispatch. That is customer component is getting called. The similar has been done with supplier model too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so these things are going on. And what I have done that in supplier HTML page, once again, I have reverted this link to home page. And that okay. is also. OK, that's great. Is. That's great. So it will be going to the router outlet, and it will be pasting more. I mean, OK. OK, that's great. That's what I expected. Thank you. Thank any you. other other one? I mean, any other yes, one? Uh, yes, I am sharing. Hello. OK. Can you see my screen? Yeah, I can. So uh, that's uh, that's what I made. So I am doing network tab. I am reloading. Mm -hmm. I am clearing this. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> customer and uh, supplier is our things, child component. Lazy loading. Yes. Lazy loading, yes. So if I click customer, then this, uh, this JS is loading. Mm -hmm. If I click supplier, then supplier model is page is loading and this list this is lazy loading. Makes sense. Makes sense. Great. Yes. And, and you use a nice CSS also. Great. Yes, yes, yes. So that's what my my coding is. Makes sense. Thank you. Thank you for completing it. Jayesh, do you want to share? Hello, Jayesh is there. Yes, I can share my screen. Partha, no. J can Jay share his screen? Jay should be there. I can see no. Jay is not here. Okay. okay. Jay is not here. Not here. Okay. So, okay. So, who want to share? Oh, Partha, you wanted to share, right? So, you have completed basically. Yes. So, let's, let's try someone random. Yes. Dheeraj? Uh, yes, I mean. Uh, have you completed exercise? Uh, no, actually, uh, due to project load, I didn't complete the exercise studies. Thank you. <coughs> Much appreciate if you get a time and if you can spend some time and try to complete it. Uh, yes, Amir. Siddesh? Amir, not yet completed. Okay. Only 16 people are there today. Why there is so much less attendance? Okay, so let's start with the session. So today we'll be learning about, I mean, we'll be repeating the same thing that we learn in the TypeScript. So we'll be learning the 
right so let me let me share the screen with you and we'll take it from there just give me a minute i'll take a pause for a minute Right, so our, yesterday we covered the uh, lazy loading and routing. So I hope you all are able to at least understand what is routing is. And in your project, if you ask to add a route, you can able to do that, right? And you can able to do the lazy loading because that's the where the you know also the some senior developer not able to understand the concept of lazy loading, and uh, it's very important for application performance. Today we we start with. Something object that's offered by the object-oriented programming, and that is called as a dependency injection. So I would like to understand your thought about the dependency injection. What? How do you visualize the dependency injection, and what problem it solves? Um, uh, dependency injection is a means uh, a concept of means injecting uh, means the means. Uh, and the class through constructor will automatically initialized uh, whenever it is necessary. So it is it, it is really common logic. And we can inject with mul in multiple components through constructor. Okay, but why we use a dependent injection? Why we wanted to inject something through a constructor? And it is just a constructor, or you can also you inject using the properties using your service. Uh, Yes, but injecting through con constructor is uh, means known as dependent induction, but we can also means uh, inject through other uh, means use use with other methods also. Mm -hmm. so, but I, mean, I, I know. Yes, it is. Uh, I think uh, when we communicate with the two components uh, in the project, that uh, uh, that's time the dependency injection will perform. So, but what is dependency injection? I mean, what is React? We learn it is a binding framework. Okay, so it binds your HTML to your car, your component. In the case of the MVC, you can all instantiate your model within your component so that your comp your model and your uh, model and um, your model and HTML page page can be binded. That is Angular, right? That is the definition of Angular. So, if I ask you what is the definition of text box, you can say that your user input can be received. So, what is dependency injection in simple terms? Why we use it? Yeah, it's a common logic that we can uh, use in multiple components as what I is no. Okay, so if it is a common logic, it's better to derive, uh, create a component, right? And use that component selector within everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yes. So what is the dependency injection in that case? I mean, why? I mean, yes, of course, what you say is correct. Say it is correct. But like we, we already learned the dependency injection in TypeScript. So that time we gone through a concept. And I, I, I demonstrated you that twice. I, everyone, I, I demonstrated that twice to you. But however, I would like to understand your, again, your thoughts. Some, someone want to go for it? Yeah, actually, dependency injection, whenever uh, particular component or the services uh, requires some other dependent or some other ser uh, services or the component then we can link through that dependency injections and we can we have to implement that dependency injections okay so let's go let's let's go by one step by one step okay so there is a there is a word used dependency so what is dependency is that a is dependent on b right that is called a dependency now right. consider there is a A object and there is a B object. Okay. You create an object within, I mean, within, within the B, you create the object of it. Right. And right. you forgot the semicolon or let it be, you write something wrong within your object A. Okay. So the code, when goes to the object A, it breaks. Now, whenever yes. you're calling your object B, it doesn't work because there is something error in object A. 
right so your object a is dependent on object b right mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. in our cases in normal software industries or in object oriented programming object a evolves during the course of time and we follow the follow the open close principle what is what is mean by that what is mean by open close principle no idea so let it be you have a object a so that object a shouldn't be shouldn't be i mean that object should uh, should, should i mean that object should be closed for modification that object should be closed for modification or adding a new functionality into it but it should be open for an extension where you can extend and create a new object from it they extend the functionality of that object and create an object from it what i mean by let it be there is some car maruti comes with a car let it be v is a car name right so you 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 are not allowed to change the functionality of v car once you launched it but you can create a v2 car where you can extend the functionality of v1 car and you can add the new modification into it or you can change to the existing functionality so that the v1 also work and uh, you can produce a new contract called as a v2 which you can offer to the customer so those who wanted to go for a new contract they can go for a new contract and those who wanted to stay on the older one they can stay on the older one so far with me yes yes so this is the open close principle now using this open close this theory is important so please listen to it or please try to uh, provide your focus because when you go on to the project you this will differentiate you from the junior developers junior developer doesn't focus on these kind of theories they just try to execute the code that's it so okay so now this using this open close principle this object is closed for modification now you go from the v1 to v2 okay now there is there, there are some let it be six or seven classes who wanted to use a v1 right who wanted to there are six or seven object who who are depend on the v1 contract now the contract is updated to the v2 okay so there is there is one way of changing them is to go every places and change wherever we refer v1 to v2 right yes right. right so you have a object from object 1 to object 10 where you have refer v1 now you can go visit the v1 change the uh, v1 to v2 and that will solve the problem but that requires a lot of work and it is called as the i mean it is called as a bad design because you 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 have a change in a one place however you need to go to the all the places and make your change okay that is that is a bad design again you change it to the v3 so contract changes to the v3 this happen over the course of the time and every time you have to go and change your code again and again so that is this is the problem being solved using the dependency injection so somehow you will not depend on the v1 but the contract or uh the signature of the v1 that is you wanted to use so are you sharing something no let me share so there is nothing i mean i'm i'm saying the theory but let me share okay so let me go on to the pet So let it be. He, these are the object of V. This comes from a V family, okay? And right, these are the V one. This is the V one. V one. This is V two. This is V three, and this is. we've okay so these are the contract default now the problem is that in our project whenever we want there are 10 components so let it be starting from uh, let it be starting from one starting from one there is a 20 object which use this there are 20 object which use this starting from one so i'll be saying that hey dot 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 these are the they are from one there are 20 object use v1 okay you points to the v1 so these everything points to the v1 now there is a contract evolve 
right? So when the contract evolved to the V2 and these wanted to use the V2, we have to go physically and modify the reference of V1 to V2. Then physically go modify the reference of V2. That is the problem we observed. Okay. Now the solution to it, how if we wanted to break to it, so we need something. We need something where this every, I mean, all the Vs can be mapped from V1 to V4. We need something V where this all can be mapped, and we can directly refer view V here. Okay, we can directly refer V every uh, everywhere, and whenever it changes, we can just pass it dynamically. Like V1, it should work. V2, it should work. V3, it should be work. Okay, so what we are doing, we are injecting V at a runtime V1 to V4 at a runtime based on our requirement, right? And we and these these objects are depend on the V and not not the actual definition of V1, V2, V3, and V4. So this is called as the, I mean, injecting something during the runtime to create an object of a class or to create the instance, we uh, instance of a class. We call that uh, we call. I mean, that concept is called as a dependency injection. So far with me. Any doubt here? Again, let's go. Let's go with very uh, try to understand this. So we have a V1, V2, V3, V4, right? So we create the contract that of V1, V2, V3, V4. We, we do not put a definition. Only the method contracts we put it inside the V, okay? And we we enforce that hey V1 you implement this method and V2 you also implement this method. But you will implement like engine is a method. But V1 has a different definition for an engine. It is 140. It is let it be 300 cc. And in case of the V1, the engine is 150 cc. Okay. In case of the V, let it let's go like the here the 100 cc engine. Here the 300 cc. Here the 400 and here the 500 cc engine. However, definition of engine differs from the V1, V2, V3, V4. And we just create a contract naming engine. And where these everyone is implementing this contract and these objects are just in array. Um, I mean, these objects are just implementing this or these these objects where we are injecting the contract and we are saying that at a runtime, this contract will be evaluated based on our requirements. So some for some some object it is V1, for some object it is V3, and that is injecting the dependency runtime due to availability of a contract. We call it as a dependency injection. So far with me. It's yes. very simple, right? So now if someone asks you what is dependency injection, you understand in terms of the object oriented way, right? Yes. Right. Cool. So how that we utilize in the Angular? Okay. So that is the question. How it is utilized in the Angular and what are the different type of dependency injection can be possible? Now someone told me the dependency injection only possible in the constructor. Yes, in a constructor, dependency injection is possible. So you let it be have let it be some some class. And you have a constructor of that class. So you can do the dependency injection. You can do the dependency injection by creating having an interface or no, not abstract class here. We come to the abstract class. The abstract class here. By doing that, we can do the dependency injection. However, this is one of the way, right? There are also an input and output parameter. So basically, the, you can also use the input parameter to inject your dependency. So far with me, you can also use the input fill run, do, uh, learn during our course. Okay. So what is input parameter? What is input properties and what is output property? We'll learn during our course. Okay. So these are the input properties also used for a dependency injection. Service is also a way of service is also offering a dependency injection where you just have a single instance for entire your project. You cannot create the service object and you can injecting that into your uh, uh, I mean, into your component. So that service is also a way of using a dependency. It's also a dependency injection where you directly specify it. Or like any import is also a dependency injection where you just import it and use it within your component. So who creates the object of that? So framework takes the responsibility creating a single object of it. And it gives you, it inject the dependency into your component, right? And that is done by the framework. So these dependencies resolved by the framework. So these are these dependency injection is used at a many places. However, we deliberately create a dependency injection in majority of the project or majority of the big project. So what is the purpose we create a dependency injection? Let's move back to the same example which we learn in our learn in our TypeScript. So let it be your project wanted to. So let me go to the let me show you. So it is the same project. However, I'll be having a utility class. 
so this is by day uh, supplier customer supplier okay window chess day five no i need to go to the day six and if i go to the src customer there is a utility class so everyone please create a utility folder okay and then there is a create a customer app uh, logger.ts create this file just a ts file now we we see this contract right we see this contract so this contract is nothing but an abstract class why it need to be abstract class i'll tell you so these uh, so first create a i logger so what is a interface can anyone explain me interface hello interface is our uh, we are uh, de declaring models we are declaring a contract contract signature so what is the contract so contract is nothing but you have a contract with learning mate let it be so learning mate says that if you you need to stay you need to follow these rules right so this is the contract so like the interface defines a contract which says that hey you you need to implement or uh, if you implement me you need to define log method right so these log method comes under the contract to use this interface so we are defining the interface and we says that uh, hey this is the this is the contract that we wanted to enforce who wanted to implement the interface now what we created we created a base class logger okay we created a base class logger and we implement this interface now this base class logger has some common functionality common functionality which is or has some functionality okay so this is nothing but rv so this is nothing but rv if which has some functionality or we might not have some functionality right so it defines a simple log method it's simple log method it is define a simple log method so it might be simple log method that is been defined in the base logger okay now what you did is you have a contract started so your first contract is in our case you see in the diagram so we have a v1 v2 v3 so let's create this contract so our first sorry let's create this object so the let's create this object right so our for, let's create this object so we v1 so we have a console logger so first we had a console logger then we had a db logger okay so it has a database logic where it goes into a database of sql server or let it be postgres and try to log something here we have a console logger so where it goes to the aws console and try to log something here we have a file logger so it goes to the remote file system and try to log something okay so these are the three logging system that we implement and it has very different type go ahead so oh, ma 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 i want to know what is the keyword overwrite is doing ha we'll come to it we'll come to it okay. so there's come the base class okay so we says that the base class this is the abstract class so what is abstract class so abstract class is a class which has a certain function defines or certain certain function define into it but we know that we someone will going to extend it and has its own definition of it right so that time we overrode uh, override or we says that hey log is a something which comes from the base however i wanted to define my own uh, method for the log and it is nothing which is defined using the override keyword so far with me yes yes so that v1 v2 that you have declared in picture that is basically a class this is console mm -hmm. logger mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. so base logger is a abstract class right base track, yes. base logger is a abstract class and this is okay. nothing but a v okay right this is nothing but a v v here right so this everyone uses base logger hmm? base logger is this v abstract class right right and other one is this class other classes exactly exactly great you are trying to you are trying to grasping it i'll i'll request you to more focus so you can learn this right yes yes and so this is a base logger and this base logger is like uh, v and these others are like v1 so console log db logger file logger now we also seen that we have a object right in our angular component these are our angular components right and these component wanted to use v1 some component wanted to use v3 some component wanted to use v4 sort of that or let it be these all component wanted to use a v4 and they and or this all component wanted to use a v1 so we wanted to create a system where they can use based on their choice or there is a centralized definition defined for them where if they if if someone gives them a v it will be replaced by v4 so there there can there are two type of scenario we we seen here right 
so let it be so let let me let me write it down so you can also understand what is centralized and what is conditional dependency injection right so there is a v1 v2 slowly v3 and v4 okay and then there is a component so let it be component 1 to component 100 now let it be these 100 component want that whenever this 100 component is binded to v right this 100 component is bind to v now whenever v is specified whenever v is specified this v should be replaced with v3 okay whenever v is specified when ever v is used it should be replaced with v3 that is the our condition that is our condition for the entire project so for that we can do a centralized definition where we see the says that hey whenever you find a v whenever you find v replace it with the v3 so far with me no actually to component 1 200 we need to extend this abstract v class or no this this v let's let's go back on to this right so yes, basically sir. what we are saying that this abstract class being used by our console logger db logger and file logger so let's okay. go with actual example okay here let's go with actual example so we have a console logger yes file logger okay db let's, let's let's stick to the true two huh? and then we have some components component 1 to component 100 okay this and is also class not an object right right this okay. is these are these are components our components our okay. actual components right and in yes. the component we 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 wanted to create a object of this class object of console logger right or in component 1 we wanted to create a object of console logger now we we do not want to directly create a object of console logger because if we started creating that if we wanted to replace it at a one centralized location we cannot able to do it means we have to go if we want to replace the yeah. console logger with a file logger we cannot do it so what we need is centralized centralized location where we can where we, uh, for whom which can give this responsibility a centralized location whom we can give the responsibility to create the object of console logger and okay. give it to the com1 okay and yes. this where com1 is depend on the v com1 says that i just want a object of i just want want a object of abstract class so this abstract class can be a console logger or can be a file logger okay so yes. these these everything is depend on the abstract class okay so this abstract class can be a console logger or file logger now for our project requirement we says that from comp uh, let it be comp our all component needs a object of file logger at this point of time in future we might change this point of time so we need a centralized location central location where we says that hey if you find the abstract class you need to replace it if you find the abstract class you need to replace it with the file logger so far with me yes so when we say someone hey find the abstract class and replace it with the file logger what we are doing we are telling him to invert the dependency so it's called a uh, it's called a ioc container or that class is a container or it does the job of inversing the dependency so angular has its own ioc container using a provider and oh, we'll go to the, we'll go there but these these terms is called as the inverting the dependency or it's called a ioc container or it says that hey Uh, we tell the angular guy right, you do you do the dependency injection for us we tell to the angular you do the dependency injection for us okay now these these we can do a centralized location and it is called as a centralized dependency injection so far with me yes, yes. right there is a conditional dependency injection now what is the difference between the conditional dependency injection same situation situation is same however here there is a one different thing like our com one to com 50 wanted to use console logger okay and our com 50 51 to 100 wanted to use file logger so the, if we says that if you find a abstract class replace with a file logger there will be only these everyone will be going to use the same right file logger now in this case they both wanted to some wanted to use a console logger some wanted to use a file logger that time we say is a conditional dependency injection means based on the condition based on certain condition we says that hey if you give me one i'll give you the console logger if you give me two i'll give you file logger so that is 
based on certain condition you are returning the type of the object it's called a condensate dependency injection so far with me yes sir ah, yes cool now let's see that's in the code let's see whatever we learn so far let's see everything in the code okay so we have a export interface logger through which we created the abstract class and now i'll i'll i mean normal programming we don't need this abstract class we can directly implement this interface to our i'll i'll show you that in practice let's forget it let's focus here so we have a i logger which implements it and this is a base logger from the base logger we extended into the console logger and we have a log definition here we db logger we have a log definition and in file logger we have a log definition okay now there's the magic comes into place where we if you go to our module right so there is a ng module and what we okay just give me a minute right so there is a ng module where we see that where we have seen that there is a declaration what is declaration does it's our components exactly uh, mm -hmm. what is import this uh, module is module. dependent on other modules react mo oh sorry angular module right right exactly and here something called as a provider which we going to see today okay here something called as a provider which we going to see the today so if i go to okay i have done it in my main module right so if you if you notice this provider so uh, i mean in case of the routing how we define the routing so how we define the routing there are two things that comes when we wanted to define the item within the routes right so and what are they the path and component right yes right yes. so here we have a two thing similar to that uh, similar to the route we have a collection right here also we does the same thing in the providers we specify a collection collection or we specify the array in the provider we specify array okay now this array has items so these items this array has a item so when and what is each item consist of it consist of two things one is a provide means someone provide and another thing is a use class provide and use class so we said the centralized dependency injection so what we said to the provide hey if someone provides you a base logger you need to inject console logger for it if someone gives you a base logger you need to inject or someone gives you abstract class our base logger is our abstract class let me show you again our base logger is our abstract class and we have override it everywhere okay yes so it says that whenever someone gives you like you know the providers providers takes a array in array each item we have we have a two properties first it's a uh, array each item we have a two property first property is provider provide and the second property is use class so someone provides you something you need to use this class if someone provides you a base class you need to use this class so it automatically angular framework automatically replace this base logger with console logger everywhere there is a base logger being referred so if i go to my uh, home component and if i now here like you mentioned in a constructor we can do it i just i also uh, injected the dependency within the constructor so what i did is i use the base class base logger and this base logger i i i said that hey this object is of type the base logger and this base logger is also being passed from the constructor however when angular framework create the object of my home component okay when angular creates the object of my home component it automatically replace this base logger with the dependency that we have provide in our case it is yes console Use logger console logger so far with me you understand what provide does yes everyone any confusion here hello okay let's try to do it let's try to do it in practice someone wanted to share his screen partha yes sir so you have a current code working right you complete with assignment go to the same assignment
I'll give you the code so that you can be, uh, there is no much time required to just write the loggers. Well, that is not an intent. Intent is to understand the dependency injection. Right, create a folder, logger. On the customer app. In, right, right. In a customer app, you can just create a folder logger. And what is the prefix you use? This is not a right structure. Not, so I, I am. Not, I am not using the prefix. Uh, it is mandatory to use a prefix in yes. Angular based on the Angular style guide. But it's fine. Now you can just create a logger folder. Okay. Within a logger, create a file, logger.ts. And whatever code I given you, you can paste it direct there. And just go through the code and tell me if you understand it. If there are a few lines missing, you can add it. Yes. Say inside the file logger using file logger or whatever you like. Yes, you know this. Now go from uh, save it, go from start to bottom and let explain these things to me to everybody. You you seen the diagram, right? It's similar to our diagram. Remember that diagram and go from the interface. What we have done here. We have an interface and uh, we have this logger. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Tell that everyone that is interface is a contract. So whoever implement this interface have to define the its own definition for log. Hmm. Now this interface is being implemented inside the base logger. Okay. So this base logger is a base class. What is a base class? It's it's in our case it's an abstract class. So it might have the definition for the log or you just define a good signature for the lock for other classes to use it or it has a basic definition for a lock okay mm. now these these base logger being extended by console logger where console logger use the log definition to log inside the cloud or wherever he likes right let it be mm. inside the cloud in our case okay so it logs within the cloud watch aws cloud watch then there is a db logger db what logger. DB logger does is logs within let it be sql server okay so it's override the definition of log why we use override base logger what base logger but the try to understand is every term has a meaning so base logger has a log right and you override what is override means in english you are i mean you are overriding or you are defining your own definition of log instead of using it from the base yes right so base logger has a basic definition and you see console logger will you uh, will override it and define it the own definition where it logs within the aws logger db logger will log within the database and your file logger will be logged within the file okay on the server some low server location now this is this is the agenda okay now if you wanted to use this logger within your customer component how you will use it first tell me that Go to your customer component. You wanted to call the log method. 
right let it be you wanted to call a log method of the file logger how you will do that on the uh, log method within your constructor first you need a constructor right first i create a constructor exactly create a constructor inside that class you are outside but no worries don't take attention be relaxed so you have a not you our component is also a class right every class has a constructor plus there is angular life cycle method to it we going to see the angular life cycle method in this tutorial don't worry about it okay what are not the you use constructor is like a function right round constructor is a function it's a reserved function right remove ha huh? okay create a braces how do you define a function how how do you define a add function similar way your constructor will go right now you you will be saying that hey uh, let it be in case our cases you will be saying logger underscore logger okay now what is the data type you wanted to assign to the logger the abstract class one right yes so what is the name of our abstract class base logger colon base logger right first we need to import na that logger right uh, uh, partha you need to import it so i'll hold on hold on go to your extensions extension yeah auto import is imported so on the your left hand side there are there are three uh, there are one two three four right so go to one two three four fifth fifth one yes that one there is a auto import Hmm. Right. Also, the install recommended or Angular language. Recommended Angular language. Install that so it can gives you intelligence. Also, also do auto import. I guess Angular language is fine. If you can come back, if it's it gives you to import it, or do we need auto import? Come back to our code. If it's auto import, is it auto import? No, right? No, it is got mm -hmm. auto import, right? Great. So you have a base logger. Now you will assign a base logger. So you are injecting within your constructor. Now assign to the property like the title. Create a property, logger property. Like a title, create a logger property. On line number thirteen, press enter and create a underscore logger. No normal logger property. Okay. Logger very small. Okay, and give it a type like a customer. This is a logger. Mm -hmm. Column. Logger, base logger. It's a base logger. My bad. Base logger type equal to null. Okay, because you are setting it to the null, and you wanted to set the value in the constructor, right? And the constructor assign a value underscore logger to it. And so, in the line number nineteen, you have to provide curly braces, starting and closing curly braces after the closing parentheses. In the end, you need to work on the object-oriented programming. You are not able to get the simple syntax. Go to the end of that line. And start the curly braces and close the curly braces. No, 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 no. Which line? Ah, uh, line number nineteen. Hmm. Just go to the last. Oh, okay. Start the curly braces and close. Them. But the format is fine. But it's fine for you, right? If you are, uh, I mean, to show your screen and to demo. 
ओके लॉगर इक्वल टू अंडर स्कोर लॉगर दिस डॉट लॉगर राइट दिस डॉट अंडर स्कोर लॉगर सॉरी दिस डॉट लॉगर इक्वल टू अंडर स्कोर लॉगर दिस डॉट लॉगर राइट so when you are referring to your property within your class na class is bind with a these context you need to say these dot logger these dot title these dot customer model sort of that okay so so have you understand what we did here so someone who creates the object of our customer app component have to pass a logger definition to it so it in our case it is should be the base logger or any definition that is derived from the base logger in our case we have a db logger console logger derived from the base logger so we can pass this uh, during while we are creating the instance of customer app component however this is create the instance of component is created by whom angular right so we right. are not going to create it so we need to tell the angular now how we will tell angular how you do the decentralized dependency injection so if someone give you a base logger replace it with the file logger how you can do that by going to your module ng module this thing there is a provide property right mm -hmm. providers okay so here you need to, here you need to create a object this is the first element of your array okay now it takes a it has a two property provide and use class so define a pro, uh, create a object empty object this we create a empty object like this curly brace just create a curly brace two curly brace open close bus then right. provide and use class in a provide you says the base class if someone provide you dot okay provide is a property right so uh, give a value to it provide then colon then use then right. base class provide colon let's complete the provide then we'll use a use class provide colon I'll give you a syntax. Don't worry. So, so my uh, provide is a keyword. Provide is a keyword. It is a property within property. your. Okay, it's, it's, a it's, a, it's, it's a keyword. It's a keyword. It's a keyword. It's a keyword. Okay, it's a keyword. Okay. Provide. So what you said in the provide? It's a base logger. This is the inbuilt property, or we can give any name actually. No, it's a inbuilt property. I see now everywhere the provide. Try to use a provide one. Let's see if it's work. I'm also curious to see it. Try to use provide one. Provide Just in private one instead of private private one. Not here. The keyword, huh? Use a provide new. Okay. Provide one is also fine. And uh, well, copy paste what I given you. Copy paste what I given you. Go to the chart. i always use a provide within it i never use anything other than the provide but it's good that you ask this so let's test it so use a provide new and use a use class new okay paste it now use a provide new wo provide hai na usko provide one karo ya provide new karo change karo let's see if it's a reserved word and angular can understand it provide one and use class one kar do so you giving error okay okay Creating the error provides. So what is the error? See, this look at this look at null. Is the error? Okay, look just create. This look at null. It's on component. It's not component. It's not component. Yes. Base logger, base logger, equal to null. 
it says that hey you need to have a strongly type based logger right and if i go to my own component uh, base logger okay just remove the null to it let's just declare it let's not assign it it's we'll assign it within the constructor go back there remove the null there yeah. oh yes right equal to null remove that remove the equal to also no no, no 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 just remove the equal to sign yes cool done and call the is method so you 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 have the logger right so these dot logger dot log call the method in line number 21 in line number 20 press enter and create a line number 21 Which, what is type of me? These dot logger dot log. Our method name is log where uh, I is capital. So we can see the something is getting printed on console. This dot logger. This dot log. This dot logger dot log. dot log right is the method which is inside this base class call the method yes okay call it uh, cur uh, open close on round bracket round bracket yeah. but i highly recommend your project has a high tight deadline i know but still if you can just spend a lot of time doing this coding that will help you any other person wanted to go out and share his screen or let let patha you complete this exercise it's a jump carry for now okay so done i guess yes right so you done it now now go to your provider and see if the error is got save have you saved this save the customer app yeah. model there is some okay file save all go to your file and save all click on the file control f save all right great now it's still complaint right what it complains about console.logger let's see console.logger so have you imported console logger no could you please so where you have to use the base logger na that time you just comma and do the console logger where you are imported the base logger ta here you can just comma and import console logger it will give you the intelligence to import console logger not here this is this is this is a angular import you need to do import in typescript imports where is the typescript import this one hmm which one so have you you haven't import anything so do import import the same syntax of above base logger okay uh, go uh, go go to from from no outside of it look at our sin uh, line number 10 right okay. just go outside of it so we can import the class instead of typing it from right a uh, space and use the syntax like of logger right Uh, see uh, where you, where you are go by go go customer app okay right go within the folder of where you the what is our what was our folder name is logger right logger yes. hmm. right within the logger your ts class exactly just press tab okay now you can see you can see uh, i mean in that you can see all the classes within the ts type a console logger and base logger right and base logger comma and the base logger okay go down go at our code see if this still complaining this one is solved okay the spelling might be different in uh, top and here but what is the complaint go and see the error now okay so i can see the error cannot find a base logger okay so your base logger spelling is not correct 
what you define and use here the spelling is the use local no go if you go to this go to the logger ts file i think yeah, you have to use provide here provide one does not exist void okay so we provide is a reserve keyword so let's use a provide instead of provide one and instead of use they are reserved so we confirm that they are reserved right mm -hmm. go to module and just yeah. go to module yes शांति से करो मॉडल पे जाओ ठीक है अब ये प्रोवाइड वन को अपने को वन रिमूव करना है यूज क्लास का भी वन रिमूव करना है बिकॉज बिकॉज वी वॉन्टेड टू स्टिक विदर्डेशन वेरी गुड यू आर डन इट नाउ यू डू देंट्रलाइज डिपेंडेंसी इंजेक्शन यू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज सेंट्रलाइज डिपेंडेंसी इंजेक्शन नाउ आई बिलीव एवरी वन शुड भी अंडरस्टैंड नाउ एनी वन स्टिल मिस्ट इट राइट एंड दिस शुड वर्क नाउ अब नाउ रन यूर कोड एंड सी इन द कंसोल यू आर गेटिंग द कंसोल प्रिंटेड देयर So go to the console, right? You instantiate within your oh, home. Oh, 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 oh. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Using console log. Okay. That's what you instantiated, yeah. right? You instantiated console logger, right? So you done the centralized dependency injection. So for everyone, so far with me. Yes. Yes. Now let me share my screen quickly. Mm -hmm. so in the angular framework like it is managed by the angular framework right 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 so there is a the, so centralized dependency injection is done by the angular so angular does the job of creating the instance of the component and when we provide something i mean when we follow the all the syntaxes or when we follow the i mean when we provide the uh, in, inside the provider when we declare the way we currently declare or we pro declare the item with a provide and use classes that time angular checks our provider from there it picks the definition and sees that hey if you find the base class and if you find any base class it represent uh, replace that with the use class so that is a centralized dependency injection so there is another dependency injection called as a conditional dependency injection that we are going to see okay so this is conditional dependency injection so if i go here and we have the definition here now let me go to the our component again so this is this is a, this is not a, okay let's first define the conditional dependency injection so if i go to my main.ts and so here so here provider i am creating a array right and these are these two first two are nothing but a conditional dependency injection so why they are conditional so here the provide what i said that if someone provides you a one give him a db logger if some provides you a two give him a console logger if someone provides you a one give him a db logger if someone provides you a two give him a console logger now how to use so, that uh, amar i have a question hmm. so uh, can we directly initialize this array in array so you have uh, used push method for the pushing this hmm. in array hmm. so hmm. can can we directly use uh, means initialize in this Yes, yes, yes. You can. This is the you know standard. I mean, this is the oh. called as. Uh, I mean, this is what you see in the project because this is the standard way of doing it. So if you directly okay. declare now, it's not a responsibility of the ng model to instantiate this array. It's not a responsibility of ng model to instantiate. So this responsibility should be even you even in your project you will see it in the separate file altogether. Okay. Okay. So in your project you will be say, uh, and if you not. You should be complaining, and you should be telling people to create a separate file for it, separate okay. TS file for it, right? Because mm -hmm. it's everyone has their own, every class or every component has their own responsibility. You shouldn't be overloading the things. Your component will be simple, and everything should be like his main route is defined in different, right? We mm -hmm. define our main route differently. So similar way, you should be defining this uh, uh, this array in some other file, and here you just importing it. Uh, i mean wherever you are saying you should be export and uh, this var should be const out of that and then you will be using here right so that's how the logical structure should look like okay okay now in our case what you are saying this is let's try to do that means just to on the same page what you are asking 
I can also declare it here. And the output will be same. It will not complain. If the push is not mandatory, but just for a, uh, showing you a litmus test for having a good code, I included there. Okay. मतलब इन सिंपल वर्ड वो कोड अच्छा दिखे इट्स लॉजिकल दिखे इसलिए मैंने उसको आर में डाल के पुश किया क्योंकि ये एन जी क्लास का रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी ये एन जी मॉडल का रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी नहीं है टू डिक्लेयर इट एन जी मॉडल गेट सर शुडन बी टेकिंग रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी ऑफ डिक्लेयरिंग दिस वेरिएबल सो इट शुड बी डन आउट साइड ऑफ द एन जी मॉडल लाइक वी आर डन इन द केस ऑफ आर मेन रूल राउट सो वी से दीज आर आर राउट एंड दिस इज डिफाइड इन अदर फाइल सो यू कैन डिफाइड इट यर नो वेर इज so right so what is a conditional where provide we says that the string so instead of provide we says find a class so in normally what we does is we say that find a base class replace with replace with console logger okay find a base class and use class console logger whenever you find a base class here what we say is that hey if someone provides me a one then i'll be hard coded one hard coded string one i'll be using a uh, db logger if someone provides me this two i'll be using console logger now how the person how the component can provide us one that is the question let's try to identify it so so far you are clear till this syntax you are clear yes sir let's see how the component someone can tell the component to do that so there is a get method or injector that we need to run learn if i go to the customer so we so angular provides a uh, Angular provide a service called as the injector service. That is in the Angular core. Okay, it's an injector. So you use an injector, and in, in constructor you pass the injector object. Okay, now you create a. a I mean, you use an injector dot get method, and tells that get method, hey, give me one. So whenever you say what is this injector contain, it contains the all definitions of the whatever you define in the provider will be present in the injector. and when you use a injector get method and you ask him to give me a definition for a one it gives you a class use class which is used for that okay so far with me yes yes so i have a i have a question like uh, ask if we declare a property of injector with the underscore so is there any is there any specific reason that is also coding standard so whenever you have something as a private right when you have something as a private right you you usually use a underscore for it okay and you you implicitly tells that hey this is a private and it will not going to be uh, we are not intended to change its scope so when you injecting something so that is a private uh, i mean that variable is private to that class and it shouldn't be accessed from the outside so uh, yeah So, so that that's why by default it, it is private okay okay and that's that's why you say underscore so uh, am i i i just want to know wanted to know so what what did this provide means provide colon one so what is this means it is nothing you are passing right? string one right? two three because that is condition right i can write my name oh okay, condition okay so this is so a condition Okay, provide is a mix uh, to use as a condition. Okay. Right. So someone ask me, give me Amaya. I'll be giving them DB logger. Okay. Okay. Got. If someone ask me, give me circle, or let it be someone ask me, give me DB logger. Let it be DB. Ah, uh, DB logger. Let's write it. So if someone ask me to give DB logger, I'll be giving him. Let's change it to the actual value. Someone ask me, give console logger. I'll be giving him that. So but one and two because of you, you can understand it quickly. That's why I just write it one and two. But let's let's change it to a DB logger and let's see if it's working. So we have to pass string. What? Yeah, in component we need to change that. Yeah. In component you need to change this one to DB logger or DB logger. That's it. And it gives you so injector has the everything. This injector class is the uh, injector service is defined by the Angular, which gives you a collection. It returns you a collection which will be having. Uh, all the things that you define and when you get use a get method and when you call a db logger it gives you that instance and that is a conditional dependent injection so it's a condition based on this condition the object is getting resolved logger object is getting user okay and boy uh, this get is a strike through getting strike through it's a it's a deprecated method so there is a oh, different okay. way of doing it we will see that in our uh, last session 
will be will be going to the RX jet with us. Will 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 come back on it. Come back to it because we need to learn a little bit of RX jet if we go with that syntax, the newer one. But it still works. There is no. Uh, right there is there is no uh, you know uh, i mean it, it it's not like it doesn't work it will work and it will it will provide you a conditional dependency injection okay so that's how we do the conditional dependency injection now someone who wants to nominate and quickly show with us conditional dependency is very simple we already seen the dependency injection anyone please quickly yes i can share but no, no, not Sushil, no, you, not you. Okay. Dheeraj? Yes, Dheeraj, please try. Uh, but, uh, actually, <laughs> don't worry, don't worry, I'll, I'll help you. Do you have the code running, right? Uh, uh, actually, I don't have a code that. Okay, no worries, no worries. Right. Prashant? Sorry, I, mean, I, I don't have the running code. Siddhesh? Actually, I am not completed. I am completed only first uh, video. Come on, guys. It's very simple. We are learning these things, right? It's not difficult things that we are learning. What if we started learning the difficult things in the session two? Simran? Samiran? Samiran? Right, sorry, yes, my yes. bad. I apologize. Yeah, I'm sorry. Please, please, thank you. Yeah, fast is using console logger is uh, working fine. Mm -hmm. As no, just fine. Just change it to the condition. So go where you define it. Sorry, right. go. go to the, your NG module. Okay. Right. So here you already defined that. Okay, DB logger is yeah. there and console logger is there. Now yeah. you just go and use the get weather. Use I injector. Sorry, use the injector. Sorry, your component. Go to the component, customer oh, component. Okay. Okay. And customer component import the injector along with your component. Okay. Which Angular code. Angular code that is injector. Okay, you are also doing the on in it. This is a life cycle hook. Yes. Inject out. Yeah, inject. 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 You will get an intelligence there. In it's an injector. Injector. Uh, I N J E C T O E. You are not getting a uh, intelligence. Have you, you are not using any Angular. Uh, I mean, have, have, are you using? Uh, let, let's let's uh, let's complete it. Now, just uh, in a constructor, uh, use underscore injector and. Like a logger, you uh, replace the logger with a injector. This one, right? Right. Re replace the base logger with injector. Okay. 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 All right. No, only in the constructor. Only in the constructor. Not that. That will be remain as it is. Base logger. I'm just uh... do control Z. Line number eleven. Do control Z. Cool. Now come to line number 15. In the constructor, you need to pass the injector object. Right. So instead of base logger, say the injector. If you notice carefully, this injector is also a dependency injection anyway. But uh, instead of logger, underscore logger, say underscore injector. You need to go do it down line number 15 for I small. Hmm. Line number 16 dot get what is the property that's not there? Get and the pass the name what you declare one right, right. It's a string. 
it's a string okay it's correct sir works that's it now just see if you if it's working on your project in in, in your console yes it's in devil logger okay just clear and refresh it should but just clear and refresh okay i devil logger cool so that's it so we're done with this exercise so let's so everyone understand the dependency injection right what is conditional dependency injection and uh what is the centralized dependency injection yes yes let's yes. move let's let's move all right let's move on to the validation now so validation is very interesting topic let's move to the validation let so me share with am i stop please right please so you you understand the most important part in the angular that is dependency injection this is the most important part because once you understand this there is a second part input output property that you will understand easily and uh, there are other directives that you will understand very easily there is a service which is very important which will be covering on our last day which you will understand very easily so these these everything is everything is based on the dependency injection so you cover the you know the core part right the core part of the angular so let's let's go to the uh, back to i mean i skip the day 5 so let me go to that day 5 and in the day 5 we are learning on the uh, validation so before we go to the validation i would like to understand your thought on the validation what is a validation hello when we take some values from users then we can validate the correct data should be taken taken from the user mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, so validation it, it, ensures the correct data from the user. So right. far, yeah. Anyone wanted to enhance this definition? Hello. Yes, to uh, validate the if the data is uh, means correct or not. Right, but where from where we take this data? Uh, from form. Uh, like a email id validation or phone number validation exactly you you bang on form okay so yes. now we okay now angular has the same thing right angular is also doing the validation based on the same thing so let me go to my html first uh let me go to my component and let me go to the my model okay now we learn that the angular is a binding framework so what angular has a view uh, okay the angular has something as a comp uh, component okay and then there is something called as a model now these these are nothing but a mvc architecture of the angular now what what my question is where we can do the validation should we do the validation logic within our view should we do the validation logic within our component should we do the validation logic within our model and what is the reason of doing where we wanted to do within our component it should be exactly so our logic should be within the component why not within the view because we are using the html some view and based on with the css need you have seen that the website looks different on the mobile looks are different on to your laptop so you might be having a two two views for a single component that could be the case you might be having a two views for a single component okay or you will be replacing or injecting these views during the run time using the angular universe okay so these things are possible uh, using the angular universe so these things are possible okay feasible so basically that that is why you don't write the logic within your view because view is easily replaceable you write it within your component however there is a one catch component is not supposed to maintain the validation component job is to do the binding okay so that is that is why that is where it is theoretically it is suggested to write the your validation logic within your model theoretically it is suggested to write your validation logic within your model but i have audited few project of angular and seen that the people are writing within the component and when you see is that you should be i mean if it's not a legacy project if it's a project which is freshly started 
you can uh, you can convey this message to your team that let's start within the model okay let's start within the model because it's not a responsibility of our component to maintain this validation component responsibility is very simple it's a binding it's just the binding so it should bind your model to your view that's it and your model should taken care of the your, all the validation and if the if the validations are within the model right if the validations logics are within the model these model cannot be used to insert within the database okay these model because if you let it be there is a customer okay there is a customer model right customer model has a three things so it has let it be it has simply it has a name and it has a validation for it so do we it has a validation for it okay so do you want do we wanted to insert our validation within the database no right so there is something called as a another concept which is come which is called when you wanted to insert we will learn this tomorrow uh this concept so whenever we wanted to insert something within the database we create a another object called as a dto what is dto is a data transfer object dto what is dto it is data transfer object so we map our models to the dto data transfer object and we insert that object within our database so you understand this concept right i'm trying to just give you the gist of this concept we'll learn once we learn the database we are going to learn tomorrow uh, how to insert a data into the database that time we'll learn this dto object but you understand this concept of the dto right because the validation exists here and we don't want to insert the validation into a database we create another object so what is our model model is nothing but a representation of your ui you are coding uh, your coded representation of your view ui so everything if you wanted to code your ui you will code your ui within your model okay so let's go and see this in practice so if i go here right uh, sorry if i go to my model right so here we are going to use the validations okay here uh, sorry it's my component and why am i am saying module, that? right 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 my bad we are this is a module we will be adding a validation within our within our model so here we will be doing validation so previously we just had a simple customer right with these three properties now we'll be going to add a multiple things into it okay now we learn that the three step process for our routing this is also a three step process and it's called as a triple c create connect and check this is the process but before before we look into this process i'll make it very simple for you okay using a diagram so tell me where this validation so let me go to the file new so we we see that we wanted to validate the form right we see that the valid we wanted to validate the form but what exactly we wanted to validate within the form we want to validate email id password that is our control right controls so let's let's see the hierarchy so we wanted to so there is a validator okay or there is a let it be validator is nothing but you say that the validator is nothing but email id validator okay so you say that i wanted to validate my email which where you okay using this validator where you will using this validator for the control okay where you are using this control i'll be using this control for my control group because within the form there form there might be a two or three control group but uh, i mean there might be a bigger form uh, which has a a bunch of things like you enter these for i mean you enter personal information then you enter your uh, i mean you enter your spouse information that is a different form so there is a validation group or there is a form group so there is a form group okay so there might be a two form okay this form group exists within what this form group exists within form okay okay this form group exists within form right and and that's that's how the hierarchy goes the similar hierarchy you will notice with angular so we first have our ng form okay we first have our ng form then we have form group then we have form control then we have validator same right same thing we discussed here validator first then there's come the control form control then there's control a group form group then there's control a, a, a there is a form 
we called it the ng form with angular so far with me yes ng form form group form control and validator okay and there is something called as a form builder now now first what we do we tell the angular hey in the constructor we tell the angular we wanted to build a form so we create the object of form builder then we say that hey form builder or hey simple form is form builder is nothing but a form right hey form builder create a form for us so it creates a form for you now you say that hey 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 form create a group for me so it created a group for you here and you assign it to your form group object once it created a group for you it assigned to your form group object then there is a control you need to add within it so what i am doing i am ask telling my form group to add a control and i am giving a control name okay first is a control name my co control name is customer name uh, customer name control and after the second parameter is what the my form control where i am say defining my validator form control form control is we we see that right here so there is a the the validation exists for a control or let it be form control so this is the we create a instance of a form control so we say that add control this method has a two parameter first parameter is a name second parameter it takes a form control within the form control we pass the validation that we wanted to use for uh, that control okay we here in the case we wanted to use a required fill validator so uh, we pass the required validators dot required so these fields becomes a required so far with me hello yes. everyone yes. So right, right it's very simple right so basically you have a validator on top of validator you add this validator within your control this control you add for within your within your form group this form group present within the form so use the form builder to create a form form object then for a form a uh, uh, form object you says that hey create me a group which creates a form group then for a from group uh, form group you say that I add a control and within the, you define a control name which you wanted to use and then you use the form control class and then in a in a in its constructor you pass the validator that you wanted to validate that uh, that control for now you here i just pass a required fill validator but I, there are cases where i can this validator has a method called as compose where it compose a Uh, array of validation. It compose a array of validation. So here I use the compose method where I pass the required fill validator and pass the pattern. So what it does is, or if I might for my customer code, what I'm saying that my customer code is a fourth length long, okay, and it can contain from zero to nine. And you can create this regex expression from there is a website called as the regex through which you can create this regex expression if you willing to do so. but these validations are i have seen in the project got evolved so they they use a multiple libraries to do this validation better so these email validation or other validation given a free of cost by the some libraries and these being used into the multiple project anyway but but the but the base concept is that we say that hey i wanted to use a pattern validation and here i wanted to say that i wanted to use a required fill validation so for my customer code what i am saying that my customer code can be from 0 to 9 and fourth length longer and uh, it should be the required field and here for my customer name i am saying that it is a required field that is the validation on the way okay now uh, i i am injecting this in the compose method and i create a for uh, i create a control which name is customer code control okay so far with me so here i created the customer name control here i created the customer code control so far with me customer code control is a single element or it is a collection of group of elements no it's a single element so control okay. is a single element usually there is a single control right that's why we said the add control but for a control we can have a multiple validation multiple validators that's why we created that that's why we created the array so okay. we said the required and the pattern because you are starting grasping the things be focused so you can be quickly deployed on the project yes yes okay so right so now when we are having this validation if you go to the html right so html uh right this is not html so right just give me a minute okay so if you go to the html we define we put everything within our form okay and we need to say that hey this form belongs to which form group that we need to tell this form so where we are saying the customer model 
dot form dot, dot form customer group now where this customer group is coming from it's coming from here model. from our model okay and how we how we use that so basically uh, this html is getting bind to what it bind to the component okay so it binds to the component Co component is code behind for this html so first you need to specify the component name customer component dot then your model name okay so that's what we do in the html so if you notice in the html what we do the uh, component, component name. name and then the then our model uh, property name i mean this is the customer model is a property within it customer model is a property within it so it our html is bind to component so we'll use the customer model property and dot what the property name that the, this creates the object of our model and this we have a property here called as a form custom uh, form cus uh, customer group that we will be using on the ui so we uh, so we says that the it you it points to this property of our component it point to the customer model property of the component and customer model dot customer model dot dot form control everyone everyone got this is it confusing uh, so where is the form custom group that form customer group it's a it's a property we exist within our within our model so look at this this property exists right okay. this is the form group okay mm -hmm. so what we said mm -hmm. that the form group form group has a uh, form group exists within the form right we use a form builder for that mm -hmm. then for for a group we have a multiple controls and for each controls we have a validation validation so far with me so for that's why we inherited these these things okay so uh, okay. Uh, is this logically valid to write any validation inside the constructor? Constructor, is it valid to write a logic within a constructor? It's it's valid valid to write a validation logic within a constructor. No, you need to write it as a separate function and you can call it within constructor. It's valid. It's valid. To answer your question, it's valid. But should we writing every logic within the constructor? No. You should be having a separate function and you will be calling that within your constructor. This constructor is your customer, right? So when your customer object is created, you validate it. So you you have seen that this validate method being called within the constructor several times. Can this model have ng on in it? Can this have ng on it? No. This, this ng model. on in it, this ng on in it goes here in your okay. component. Part of right? component. And when you are doing the ng on in it, that time you can also instantiate your instead of having it so this customer object you are you instantiated here right so you can also do instantiate this customer object within your ng on in it okay so customer is a model to instantiate your model within your component now component has a different life cycle hooks which is nothing but a ng on in it and there are other hooks which we'll be going to see uh which which uh, which you know you render your dom and then you wanted to modify it so you will be using a different life cycle so that's how it's worked so now we what we did is for simplicity we just globally declare it right but it should be either go within the constructor or within any life cycle hook the creation of this object either go into the constructor or in a life cycle hook based on our need so far with me okay yes okay so when we see the life cycle hook, our logics inside this constructor then uh, error will be thrown during the creation phase Let's try. So whatever written in the constructor will be automatically initialized, right? So you are saying that you think that it just will throw the error, right? It shouldn't be according to me. The good that you are asking.
So tomorrow is very important lecture. Tell your friend to join because we will be seeing a database insertion and how the observable works and other things. And day after that, we'll try to focus on RxJets, which will be the last lecture. So Amaya, I want to learn uh, another means host binding, host listener. Also, I want to learn so what is host binding and host listener. Sure. Sure, I'll include them. Anything anyone wanted to learn? Yeah, basically, NGRX can plan. NGRX. Yeah, we we going to see the RXJS, right? Okay, okay. On the last day. Because it's it's a bit complex, so I'm not sure you'll how much you'll be able to get. Right. So what okay, validation, right? So go to the customer. Let's try to enter the customer code. Yeah, it's working. It's not complaining about anything. Okay. Okay. So we can debug and see the things, but it's working. Right, so we we given a responsibility to our model, okay, and we instantiate a, a model object within our constructor, okay, and uh, okay. So what if we have here, here all object instantiation can can happen within the model, but okay, and here we says that hey, the form control and form control we are given that responsibility, right, and right, and this is what uh, okay. So this is this is. This is what how we configure our validation. Now, now this is what we configure it, right? So this validation can either be true or false, but we haven't shown the message based on that. Or by checking the validation, we haven't done anything. Means either you can valid or invalid. What it has nothing to do with what we, uh, what we. I mean, this is nothing to do with the other functionality. I mean, the validation can returns you a true and false, right? It can say that hey, I'm valid or I'm invalid. That's it. But based on this flag, you have to do your, uh, you have to block the user from doing a multiple thing. Now, how you can do that? So, if you notice here, let's let's try to look this code first. So, we have a form group where we are declared. It. Now, this is the input. This input name is customer code control, and the same input we have given to it. Okay, the same input name we are given to this control. So these can be binded together. So far with me? Yes. Yes. Okay. So that the control names are same, form control names are same. Okay. And and these are the same name which we use during our validation. Okay, then we use the two-way binding. Then what is this syntax doing here? Sending the data from component from view to view component so there are two two syntax right we learn we learn this right this is very important this is very basic don't forget it what is this syntax does send the data from view to sorry you are right correct send the data from your view to your component and what component. this syntax does get the data from or get, send the data from your component to your view property binding yes that's right is. right so this is what is doing it doing your property binding so it's binding the form uh, form customer group to the form uh, form group okay and if we done after doing this this forms is end here now what we do we are using the ng if okay and what we are saying we are pointing to the same form group right same form group using this uh, above okay and we are use, checking the dirty property what is dirty property uh, it means uh, uh, means if some uh, error is happening, no, if no, input no, has no. or not or touched or yeah, you, you, when, you, when we first come into the customer, right? We haven't done anything, so this form is pristine. Okay, okay, okay? Yeah, yeah. pristine means without any change. Okay, without any change. Now, once you type anything here, so it becomes a dirty. Okay, so what you are saying? When it become a dirty? When it become a dirty? 
i wanted to trigger i wanted to show this message if the validation is not meeting okay okay so when you first come on the form you don't want to show this message to the user that every uh, everything within the form is invalid as soon as the user make it dirty you wanted to show that message right as soon as user type something you wanted to show that message telling that user hey you are typing but it is not up to the mark or your password is not meeting the expectation so you need to type till this expectation get met or you need to correct your password according okay so that's how okay now this is what this hidden is doing it's hiding the uh, it's hiding this control okay it's hiding this div but now what is different between the hidden and ngf that is your homework when you meet me tomorrow try to find it it's very simple so i told you what is ngf what is ngf ngf, NGF is uh, yeah ngf structured directive just right? uh, it, hidden is the attributed active, directive right and what is the attributable directory and what is different between attributable directory and structural directory structural is simply remove element from the dom whereas exactly. hang on structure remove the element from the dom where, where it's remain element remain but it has a uh, it has Indian. a hidden to it or display none cool great so now it has a has error method which i define on my uh, which i have defined in my component okay component has a has error method now what is error this method text it takes a two parameter this is my own method which me which returns a true and false okay this takes a two parameter one the control it wanted to validate second uh, uh validation it wanted to validate so basically validation collection has a control and within that control single control there can be a multiple validation so for which validation we wanted to check so here i am saying that i just wanted to check the pattern validation is require validation i am not concerned about as of now so i wanted to check the pattern validation so that's what i am saying here so when i go inside because pattern validation also check for a required so when i go here it says it takes a two parameter like i mentioned the type of validation and a control to validate and then you know the this type of validation okay so let's go for step by so it goes to the customer model from there it face the form group form group which face the control from the control uh, uh, collection it use the indexer and face the control name and a control name has a uh, property name has error which takes the type of validation and return if it's true or false and it returns us a true and false and we get that true and false and once we get that true and false we go to our view and we return that true and false to the hidden now if our validation is failing what we wanted to do we wanted to hide right so for false we wanted true so that's why i use a negation sign here simple math okay that's why i use a negation sign here so similar way i have done it for the other things now let's see in the action if this validations are working so far with me you are getting this simple thing yes okay yes. now you go on to the ui and you type customer code let's type for some this thing so it complains about the customer code right customer code format is not proper that's what we written here yes 0 to 9 it's pattern and you can add a css beautiful css to show the red marks and what not and what not okay and yes. so if if someone ask you to do a validation in your project you will able to do it now let's do it 1 2 3 4 so it start taking it let me put a customer name as my name and let me put some amount 1 to amount we haven't use any validation okay so amount can be still be a wrong no problem but you can tomorrow when you are coming please add a some validation for the amount okay yes and for or change the customer code validation put it for amount amount is a four digit number and customer code you add a validation required field validation or add a pattern where you can accept any uh uh, uh it's a four digit but it should be the numeric and uh, the alphabet Okay, and if you find and those who are trying to find uh, difficult to create a regular expression can ping me. I'll just give them the regular expression for free because we don't want it to spend your time on creating the regular expression, but use that regular expression and do the validation in Angular. Yes. Okay. Or uh, okay, I'll put it on the group your validation uh, for a regular expression if you want. Anyway, so this is the regular expression through which you are doing this validation, and these validations are being applied like this. Okay. these validations are being applied like this is required okay okay so that's that's for the 
today's session and i i wanted someone to share and do this validation but let's skip it for because you understand right let's go again let's go again let me let me uh, let's go again and uh, i believe so we have a validation in our model we have a validation in our model and ng form is not required how this model is glued with our component how Through this that model type. is glued now you tell me how the model is glued with our component because we have uh, making type of that elements variables no what is angular what is the job of angular what is mvc angular is a binding framework which binds a view and components view right. and mo model so how this model is glued with our component component right so we create a property within component right right and so this property it's glued okay okay fine you are creating new customer app okay and and whenever i wanted to refer anything related to validation how i am referring it within my view by checking model dot model dot then property okay. name right and this where it exists this model this property exists within our component component so that's right our, our html is already glued with our component component and component is glued with model model okay. using now. this property now it's clear okay because yeah great great so you understand mvc now great this is what nothing but mvc is. this is the clear picture of mvc that you have shown here Right. Because in our projects, everything is written inside component only. So I know, I know. I already given a feedback. Yes. To your project, and they, what I heard is that this project is developed by some junior associates, and that's why it is like that. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, in many projects you can find it, but those yeah. projects who has a MVC architecture or driven towards the MVC or MVW, they'll not right. use it. For if they has a presenter, you can see that you are even though your view is. Is dynamically being injected, or if your project, if if you, I mean, I know a complex project where it uses Angular Universal. For mm -hmm. them also, it's like they are using the, uh, or for a React project, I've seen that uh, in CCA for a React project, they are also using a .NET, and from there the, uh, there there are from there the view is getting created and injected. So these okay. views are not a part of this. Uh, JS only view is also created through JS. We was created to .NET service. Okay, .NET service. Okay. Okay, and they are given to the JS. So okay. it's a backend. So for, if you wanted to render an application, you call to the backend, which will create a entire structure and give it to backend. Oh, okay. like that. Okay. Anyway, but but for nutshell, you can you can say that this view you can copy twice, and you can consider that there are through two views, and dynamically the view is being injected in the component. So in the component where we refer to the this. Uh, Component refer to a template URL, right? So we hard code this template URL. Temp template URL. But right. What if this template URL are coming using some config, and based okay. on this configuration change value, there are different template URL being referred with a different two different deployment. Right. Okay. So that's how it is. So for let it be for Windows, you have some other deployment, and for mobile, you have some other deployment. Other deployments. Okay. And that's how these. Template URL is variable, or it's coming from the configuration. And using the configuration, this template URL differs, and you have a two different view for a simple component. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, so that's 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 how it is, and we are ending a little bit early today. Uh, but I'll all open for a question. So anyone has any question, we should be going through, and any topic wanted to learn for a tomorrow session. So uh, what I'll be doing, I'll I'm going to tell you. So tomorrow we'll be using, uh, we'll be using a JSON server to create a server for a backend. So it's a free, I mean, it's a very simple server. You just need to install a package and it creates a server for you. And we can use the server as a service, and we can use the get, post, put, and delete. And we are using a observable, and we are not using a RxJS concept for our observable. Like we haven't used it. Uh, we use a simple deprecated method, so we'll be using that. And finally, day after tomorrow, we'll be replacing that method with the RxJS method. So that's the plan. Okay. Okay. And along with that, we will be using a setter getter method. Also, we try to create a grid component, which grid component will try to 
create this grid component uh, i mean uh, it's a generic component where you can use it within your supplier and within your customer using the interfaces so it takes a interface and you can replace this either with a employee interface or sorry there is a generic interface called as a person interface you can either replace it with the employee or you can either replace it with a supplier so in our case it's a customer interface where you can replace with customer or you can replace it with uh, suppliers or entity interface where you can replace it with the customer and the supplier so uh, can you uh, also show us the input and output method sure we'll we'll show you tomorrow the input and output methods okay sure so we'll be learning the input and output method tomorrow so tomorrow lecture will be a little bit heavy it's not heavy it will be very simple but you need to grasp it of course so like we we i i only focus on the two concept for a day right so if you notice each day we only focus on two concepts so that's why we are on the sixth day so you know this is this is a third day so there is a fourth day seven and eight which will be going to learn tomorrow and seven and eight also we are going to learn day after tomorrow where we are using the same thing but we are replacing with the rx gx so far the speed is look good to you right or it should we need to add a more content actually we need some more practices along with our projects so Okay. Mm -hmm. so do you want to someone wanted to share and start this practicing of this uh, form uh, validation or for your homework you need a practice yes uh, first we need to go through the videos and then yes, yes. okay okay let me share this everything once once we're done with the our session i'll share every code my all code with you you can go and play along with it whatever you want and you can create your own project by doing that and you can just create a project upload it on the linkedin profile and tag me or whatever you can share with the your manager and tell him that hey this is my resume now so amar uh, can you give give us a, a sample project a good sample project from there we can uh, means learn. I'll, I'll give you whatever i have for this session right i can give you now on that you can start at adding the multiple things and you can create a sample project okay only validation is not there but for a validation also there is a simple plugin that you can use validation routings right so i uh, i mean this project i can give you which has a home customer and supplier so you can like we are done for a customer you can do it for a supplier you can add a validation and then uh, right and i can show you something really yeah. it will not work because I don't haven't started server. So these require another terminal. So I'll open a terminal. Right. Then how to start the server? And package or JSON. Then server. So npm start mode of server. Okay. Started. So terminal. I show three thousand port right. Three thousand. So on local host three thousand, it should start the server. Or a backend server. Tomorrow, first we do the hands-on practical because this is very important that you understand how we are creating the server and other stuff. So I'll be seeing and then I'll asking someone to share and do the things. Partha, I, I request you please try to do some. Uh, I mean. When you are coming for a tomorrow lecture, please try to complete it. Yes, sir. Sorry, and I'm just using this time to have a discussion with some of you. Can you stop sharing for time being to see your all name? Uh, Social, right? Could you please ping me your project name so I can connect with? Uh, 
I can initiate a discussion with your project manager to uh, get you some task from there. I mean, maybe 30, I would ping you. Sure. And I appreciate if you just also specify the project manager. Yes. Okay. Right. So let's end this. Let's not take your precious time. You So you can go back and do work on this. And I expect that after this session, you can start at least. Uh, I mean, you can go through the videos or you can go through the online tutorial and start validations and start on the dependency injection. And if you start somewhere, write me a mail or have a discussion within, post on the group. So we, uh, so if you use the, and your friend is not, he can help you there. So start doing this exercise. As a, uh, you know, these sessions are just, just for a sake to push you to learn the things, right? And we, we are not covering much here. We are covering very, very minimal things. There are a lot of things that needs to be covered in this session, which I'm trying to avoid because I'm following the 60-40 principle. So I'm not covering 40%. I expect that you learn this 60%. 60% better. So when you go on to the project, the 40% things you can start learning from the project. Okay, everything, if I taught you everything and you learn 0%, then you will fall into a, a problem. So learn 60% better, go on the project, start applying this 60% and learn the 40% which you don't know. Right. Also, you can refer to the Udemy tutorials. I can give you some tutorials name which you can refer to, or I can conduct another Angular session where we can cover the advanced concept, like writing the, uh, creating our own directives, uh, all the types of directives, creating our custom directives, what, what not and what not, or RxJX advanced session, sort of that. Okay. So with that notes, signing off and see you tomorrow. Yeah. Thanks, Amay. Thank you. Thanks, Amay. 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 Thanks, Amay.